Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Straight Up BMW. Uh, continue the build on the N55, uh, serial number 7416. If you guys were last recall, we had uh, installed the main bearings. Uh, we did our plastic gauge check with the crankshaft, all are within BMW uh, specification. That's good, that's all been cleaned up. Still have the lower main bearings on. Um, got the upper main bearings installed into the bed plate. Next thing that we want to do is we're going to go ahead and install the crankshaft with our assembly lube. I'm using Redline assembly lube. Install the crankshaft. We're going to check the axial end clearance or end play. Then we're going to check the rolling coefficient of friction. Um, rolling coefficient of friction, I usually check it with the bed plate off and then with the bed plate bed plate on so after that we are going to go ahead and install the lower bed plate with the sealant okay so let's get to it red line assembly lube now my gloves is clean Brand new pair of gloves. All right, so crankshaft installed. We've got the red line assembly lube. Rotated the crankshaft, feels pretty good. Let's go ahead and check our end clearance. Now, um, you gotta get creative with this because uh, this, is, this is not magnetic, so... Uh, All right, so we got it set up. Uh, let's go ahead and check our end play. We're gonna thrust our crank all the way to one side. All right, crank's got five thousandths of axial end play, 0 0.005. That is well within the acceptable BMW specification. All right, so that is good. All right, so we're gonna check the rolling resistance, the coefficient of friction. Uh, we've got a beam type uh, torque wrench, a little bit of a reducer. So let's go ahead and take a look.
we are continuing our rebuild on the N55 uh, engine. As you recall, we uh, installed the crankshaft. Uh, we lubed it up, um, checked the radial end clearance, uh, checked the rolling resistance, breakaway torque, and so forth. So everything is good. Uh, next step is for us to install the bed plate with the sealant. Now there's a little bit of, um, not, not, I'm not going to say there's misinformation or incorrect information. I think it's just, uh, there's duplicate information out there. Now the way that I understand it and the, the way that I'm going to do it is, and you guys correct me if I'm wrong, but the earlier BMWs, N54s, uh, they all call for the application of the Loctite application of the Loctite with the plunger through the injection nozzle hole right uh, in my opinion there's been some problems with this because there is not enough pressure when you put it over the nozzle to overcome the the pressure of the fluid to overcome the injection nozzle to unseat the ball uh, and you've got to keep it pretty constant with a lot of pressure against it if not you have a lot of leakage and spillage now this is a factory sealant uh, if you take one apart you'll see the factory sealant that orange uh, sealant in between the grooves. Now, in the early N54s, it's my understanding that this was required to put it back with this plunger. And you see a lot of forms, guys are spilling it, and it's just it's just wasteful. Um, after the N54s, when you go to migrate to the N55, say 2011, 2013, 14, 15, 16, when you look at all that uh, man information from BMW. It calls for applying the Loctite 5970, which is an RTV silicone in the groove, 2.5 millimeter, cut the tip to 2.5 millimeter, apply a thin layer across the groove, and then put the bed plate on, and then you seal up the injection nozzle. So as a replacement or a work on any engines after factory on N55s, it's my understanding that it's recommended to use the sealant. However, BMW released a TIS a while back, 2011, 2013, and the way that it reads is that this is the sealant to be used going forward. All other sealant are obsolete. So, you guys tell me what you think. Leave a comment, start a discussion, but I believe that this is a better sealant than the RTV. I don't think RTV is going to last longevity of an engine i think and everybody you guys have had experience with some form of rtvs that doesn't last a very long time i think this sealant the factory sealant is the best way to go so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna install the bed plate dry as the way it was called for on the older engines the n54s and i'm gonna install the sealant but i'm gonna try to find a better way to install the sealant without waste so Leave me a comment, tell me what you think, tell me if I'm off base, tell me if I'm wrong, if I'm right, tell me I'm right. I don't know. But let's go. But I, bottom line, I think this is the best sealant to go for this sealant of the bed plate because it'll last the life of the engine. You won't get any leak. Plus, it's my belief that applying an RTV or any type of a sealant on the surface and then putting the bed plate on, you run the risk of putting a gap between your plate and your block and if you have any type of a block and you have a liquid that it's, it's going to compress and come out but you're still going to have some type of a liquid in between there and and you know you guys remember from science class liquid is an incompressible fluid so it's going to raise that bed plate up if it's five ten thousands one ten thousand point zero 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 one 
that amount is taken off your bearing clearances. You're adding to your bearing clearances. So I think the best thing is to just have it in the groove that seals it. And that's what I'm going to do with this. All right, that's my sew box right now. So let's get started. All right, so we're going to continue with the uh, bed plate insulation on the N55. Okay, so um, everything is cleaned and cleared. All holes are cleaned. Uh, bed plate, I've applied uh, some insulation, liquid molly, uh, crankshaft, bearings, insulation paste. And we're going to go ahead and install this now. All right, so initial torque, 20 Newton meters. All right, so all bolts have been torqued to 20 Newton meters. We're gonna go ahead and mark the head of the bolts as a visual. So when we do our angle torque, we can see the visualization of the angle torque, 70 degrees, okay? All right, so we've gone ahead and torqued the main bolts, uh, 20 Newton meters and 70 degrees. We can see the indications visual indication of the mark so we know these are all torqued what i'm going to go ahead and do i'm going to check the end clearance uh final end clearance with the bed plate on rolling resistance and breakaway torque then after that we're going to go ahead and install the aluminum screws we're going to torque those down with the angle torque okay Uh, now we're going to go ahead and install the aluminum bolts. Okay. Always replace. Aluminum bolts are a one-time use. Okay. Make sure you guys can see this. Okay. The aluminum bolts three different size okay these two two different lengths this one a whole different size they each have a different torque value so just be cautious about this okay and I'll go through that as as, as, as we torque them
Okay, so we've, we've just snagged up all the bolts. Uh, majority of the bolts are the shorter ones, which are on the perimeter and the inside. The two longer ones are here and the smaller bolts are on the outside here. So majority of the bolts are going to be, initial torque is going to be 50 Newton meters. So we're going to go ahead and do that first. Okay, so the larger diameter bolts, which are the M10s, are initially 15 Newton meters. The M8s, which are on the two outside, are initially 8 Newton meters. So they have been initially torqued, and after each one, you can see I've gone ahead and marked a line because it's very easy to get confused when you torque it to see which one you've torqued. So. It's just easier for me, uh, you guys uh, tell me if you've got a better method, but after each one I've, I've put the line so when I do the angle torque, I can see it. So we're going to go ahead and do the angle torque on these now. Ninety degrees. All of them is going to get ninety degrees. Okay, so all the aluminum bolts have been torqued. If you can see, they've all been turned the 90 degrees. So we've got the markings aligned, uh, turned 90 degrees. So this is a great visual indication to make sure all your bolts have been angle torqued. So now you can just go along the line and you can look and see everything is along the same line that you didn't miss any bolts. Okay, 